These uh, started in 2001, and they're named in honor of William Marshall Bullitt, who was the Solicitor General under William Howard Taft. He's from Kentucky. He was a lawyer of uh, renown. He served the federal government in uh, many other ways, in addition to being the Solicitor General. Uh, was, was he an ambassador at some point? No, the U.S. Shipping Board. Yeah, he was on the U.S. Shipping Board. And he also was a uh, very interested in mathematics and in astronomy. He was a lawyer. He was, he was uh, what you'd call a polymath person interested in many things. And so in his memory, major in the American Red Cross. Oh yes, he was also major in the American Red Cross. Special piece of the Grand Central So in 19 in 1919 after the end of World War 1, he also uh, led his uh, peace mission to France after uh, after all of the bloodshed there. So he was interested in law, he was interested in mathematics, he was interested in astronomy. He was interested in helping his country, he was interested in business. He did many many things. And in his memory, we are holding here tonight an astronomy lecture. There are other uh, bullet lectures. There's one in art, there's one in mathematics, law. Okay, so this is to celebrate his memory because he actually gave a lot to Kentucky and to Louisville and to the University of Louisville and to the nation. So his grandson, Mr. Lowry Watkins Jr. has been generous enough to fund this lecture series and also the Bullet Scholarships in Astronomy for the best undergraduates every year, and also the best paper award in astronomy, and also he has uh, generously endowed a book fund. We have a rare book collection in astronomy and mathematics and law as well. Yes, mathematics and, and astronomy. So actually, if you go into the library, we have an original of uh, Newton's Principia, for example, which is from about uh, the 1680s. And it's a gift of William Marshall Bullitt. So the first thing that we'd like to do today is to honor some of our students who have done very well. The uh, Bullitt Scholarships in Astronomy were started in 2001 along with this lecture series. We've had about... Uh, 15 people get this award over the years. The number's growing, and we have a little alumni club. So I'd like to call up Brianna Ausbrooks and Brian Least and Asha Nagaia. And our first Bullet Scholar is going to be Brianna Ausbrooks is an undergraduate major in physics and astronomy. She's going to receive an award to help her to continue her studies. <laughs> Brianna has been doing research in astronomy with Dr. John Fieldhoff on globular clusters, and she has been out to the Moore Observatory. She is uh, going to, you're going to graduate this year, right? And then go on to bigger and better things. Our next winner is Brian Least. Brian is a senior majoring in physics. Oops, it's the wrong paper here. And he is doing research with Dr. Lutz Hobart Settle and uh, also in collaboration with me on galaxies. And he is a senior, he's going to be graduating this year as well. And our last Bullet Scholar in Astronomy is Asha Nagaia, who's also a senior in Physics, and she has been doing research with Dr. John Morrison on calculating the various atomic states of molecular hydrogen, which actually has turned out to be a very hard problem. And she too will graduate in May and to go on and uh, further her physics career. We also have a Best Paper Award, and the Best Paper Award also goes to Asha Nagaia for writing up her paper on uh, the atomic or the electronic states of molecular hydrogen. It's been submitted to the Journal of Computational Physics. It's under review, and we expect it to come out as a part of the published body of intellectual work 
to advance science. Our past Bullet Scholars have gone on to do a number of things. Some of them have gone on to become teachers. Some of them are still in graduate school. Some of them are postdoctoral researchers. Best paper award winners, uh, actually, they're here. And some of them. Uh, we have uh, several previous winners here. And we're very proud of them. And uh, we hope that you remember us as you continue on in your careers. Thank you. The astronomy program here at the University of Louisville is made up of people. These are the people. And remember that, uh, well, a great football coach named Woody Hayes once said, we win with, you win with people. We feel like winners when we have students like this, and also people who help our students like this in our program. So thank you. For this lecture, we also have some people who help us, and I would like to thank them. The, there's a lot to do here. Uh, Jim LaRoche made the poster. Marigel Rockledge in the uh, Department of Physics and Astronomy has done a lot of the work behind the scenes with the administration, and we deal with it as well. We had a number of posters go up in town and on campus. I'd like to thank any members of the Louisville Astronomical Society who are, who are here. Could you stand up, please? Any members of the LAS? They always help us with up posters. If it's clear, which unfortunately it's not tonight because this is Kentucky, it's not known for its uh, sunny skies. Normally the Louisville Astronomical Society also sets up telescopes, but they're also a great presence on campus and in the city to help promote the uh, science of astronomy. Also, the uh, Society of Physics students has helped put up a number of uh, posters on campus and in the surrounding community. Any members of SPS here? These are undergraduate majors. SPS members, please stand up. Okay, I, I can spot at least five here. The advisor is Jim LaRoche, and uh, David Brown has helped a lot with advising me in previous years. He's the advisor. And lastly, Mortarboard National Senior Honorary, a, uh, an organization which specializes in honoring scholarship, leadership, and service. They, too, have been putting up posters on campus and in town. Any members of Mortarboard here? Okay. So thank you to Mortarboard and to the Society of Physics students and to the Louisville Astronomical Society for helping us to put on this lecture and fill up the planetarium. Now on to our main event. Dr. Rakir. Windhorst is a full professor at Arizona State. You're an endowed professor. What's your, your regents professor at Arizona State University? He specializes in the study of distant galaxies. He started out his career in the Netherlands. He's Dutch. He got his bachelor's degree and also his PhD at uh, University of Leiden. And he worked with uh, an advisor named Harry van der Lans, who went on to become the director of the European Southern Observatory, which is one of the premier observatories in the world. After his PhD, he came to California, and he was a uh, postdoc, postdoctoral research fellow at the Carnegie Observatories of Washington in Pasadena. He's used some of the biggest telescopes in the world. He's used Mount Palomar. He's been to Las Campanas, which is uh, a big observatory in the Southern Hemisphere. After a couple of years in Southern California, he went to Tempe, Arizona, to Arizona State University as a faculty member, where he went and continued his research on the most distant galaxies in the universe. He started out working with radio sources, and it turns out that some of those, mo some of those most distant objects are radio sources. And he continues today not just working on galaxies, but also as one of uh, six is it, interdisciplinary scientists for the James Webb Space Telescope. I'm not going to say a lot about the James Webb Space Telescope because he will, but uh, let's say it's the next big thing. So let's welcome Dr. Rahir Mindhorst to the University of Louis. It's great to be here at the University of Louisville, and I've had the great pleasure today to talk to some of your faculty and students. You've got outstanding students here that are doing great stuff. I'll mention some of that tonight, and great faculty who are doing beautiful research. Um, yeah, and you have a nice planetarium here. I almost fell asleep in these wonderful chairs during the <laughs> um, You may have seen this bagel here. I'm not trying to be rude. That's not my lunch. I'll need it later. Um, the talk won't be that long, trust me. Okay. So the James Webb Space Telescope, um, here it is. This is an engineering model. After its launch, 
Ariane 5 opens up. The sun shield folds up, folds out first. That's not the solar panel. This is to keep it cold. We'll see that later. So it folds out automatically. We test this many times on the ground, sort of telescopic bars, like my analog pointer point. It folds out just like that. And then uh, spreader bars will separate that sun shield here. Um, it's about the size of a tennis court, five layers of Kapton, which is like glorified saran wrap that you use in your kitchen to. Um, it's very high, highly reflective, so it, it brings the temperature down from um, basically earth temperatures on this side where the sun is over there. And then the secondary mirror folds in via these bars and these uh, two side panels of mirrors fold forward like the two sides of a milk carton that you fold into one plane. This doesn't happen in 24 seconds like here. This takes about 30 days. So it's like watching grass grow. Um, we test that ring on the crown, of course, many times to make sure it works. Let me get rid of this one here for a minute. Oops. And then get this one in full screen mode. So this is the actual material for the talk. I hope you can read all that. And please, uh, well, a raised hand I won't see. So just yell or speak up if you have a question or you can't hear or see something. So the title is Beyond Hubble. Um, from the exoplanets that Hubble has seen to the first stars that the James Webb Space Telescope will see. Um, and everything in between, bird's eye view, um, what is currently being done with Hubble and what will happen in the future with James Webb. So there's the actual Hubble Space Telescope in low Earth orbit. That is the Earth. 